Today, Virginia Tech fans will tune to WBCS, the official network of the BCS. W stands for wins. The Hokies need two. In the national title climb, many have fallen. Few remain. But Frank Beamer's Hokies are very much alive. At 9-0, Virginia Tech's run has been powered by Corey Moore. He's college football's most electric pass rusher. The Hokie defense lives on big plays. Michael Vick has made his share of big plays. Today in Philadelphia, his sights are set on revenge. Trench Stadium in Philadelphia. This is where Virginia Tech looks for revenge and looks to take another step towards a national championship. Hi everyone, welcome to the vet. I'm Rich Waltz. The Temple Owls have no chance to win this football game. That's what everyone said about this game and last year. And you know what? The Temple Owls didn't listen. They went into Blacksburg and pulled off maybe the biggest upset in college football history. This is a better Temple Owl team this year, Gino Toretta, and I guess the question is, can history repeat itself? History can repeat itself, but what Virginia Tech realizes is how precious these opportunities are to win the national championship. Well, if they're going to win a national championship, I think first you have to turn to their defense, because it really sets the tone for this Hokie team. And the guy that drives that bus is Corey Moore. Corey Moore is amazing. He has wide receiver speed at the defensive end position. 4-3 in the 40. He's very disruptive. And Temple has to account for him every single play. I think this Virginia Tech team is going to have to account for a Temple offense that is dramatically different from last year, better than last year. Devin Scott starred in the game last year. He'll play a big role today. He will. Devin Scott has thrown 12 touchdowns in their last 14 quarters of play. He's playing very well, only as a true sophomore. So look for him to have a good game today. The Temple Owls feel this is a big opportunity. Number two, Virginia Tech and Temple first to the studios. Reese Davis, John McAvitt. Stadium in Philadelphia, the home field for Temple. They are 2-0 in this facility this year. They take on number two, Virginia Tech. Down to the field quickly, Don McPherson. Donnie? Hey, Rich, we've heard the battle cry from coaches before. Offense, defense, special teams. But for Virginia Tech and Frank Beamer, this is not lip service. They've been the best in the 90s, blocking 63 kicks. This is a complete football team in all three phases of the game. On the other side for the Temple Owls, there's added concern. They have true freshmen at Hunter, kicker, long snapper, and kick return. This is obviously the biggest game these young players have seen, and they're going to have to step up big against the best defensive special teams unit in the country. Thanks, Don. Jimmy Kibble, a two-time All-Big East punter, will do the kicking. You're right, Virginia Tech special teams, a trademark of Frank Beamer. Tenardo Sharps is deep for the Temple Owls. 61 degrees just about darn near perfect for November in Philadelphia. Virginia Tech number two in the country. Sharks out of the end zone. And the Temple Owls will get the first possession. They won the toss and wanted the football. This man Devin Scott is just a sophomore. And Gino, he's made the transition from an option quarterback to a spread passing quarterback, and he's done it quite well. He's gonna, done it quite well, and he gets better with every game. Like, I, like we said in the open, 12 touchdowns in the last 14 quarters of play. He has to have a big game for the Owls today. Scott works from the shotgun. This offense is very similar to Kentucky's offense and Hal Mummy, and there's a good reason why. Mummy and Bobby Wallace are very good friends. And the first play is a handoff. Carl Bradley makes the stop. 
on the first carry of the day Marcus Godfrey the tailback he has to have a big game for Temple he's averaging just 31 yards per game their running game for Temple is not real good the three receiver set and Carlos Johnson is a guy that will go deep and he'll get there 40 catches four touchdowns in just six games Tim Leach a good offensive lineman but he'll be tested by Corey Moore most of the day. Second down, a quick screen that's incomplete, almost a lateral. It was intended for Carlos Johnson. Virginia Tech's defense is best in the Big East, third in the nation. John Engelberger doesn't get the headlines, Corey Moore does, but Engelberger has seven sacks and five career block kicks. Jamel Smith is the leading tackler on this defense. Five of the front, actually six of the front seven are seniors up front. And Anthony Midget and Ike Charlton combined to force six turnovers last week against Miami midget had three picks Charlton picked up three fumbles and Temple on third down Scott throwing deep looking for Jamal Wallace who's got the ball Wallace is down to the 15 yard line 62 yards this is exactly what Temple needs to do early. They need to come up with some big plays. Devin Scott just gets a little pressure, able to get out of the pocket, find his receiver downfield late. It's a heck of a play, a good way to start for the Owls. Temple not using a huddle, so the Owls hurrying things up. They've got it at the Virginia Tech 15 yard line. Inside handoff to Marcus Godfrey. And Godfrey is inside the 15, down to the 14 yard line. Carl Bradley made the stop. Here you see Scott just gets a little pressure from over here on the right hand side, but he's able to break contain, finds Jamal Wallace, who just creeps behind all the defenders, and they kind of fall asleep. The Virginia Tech defense able to pick up a big play. And there, Ike Charlton just saving the touchdown there with the gate, the tackle at the end of the play. A lot of big plays late in the second quarter is how Temple stole the momentum from Virginia Tech last year. Scott swings it out. It's caught at the 10 yard line for a gain of about four. Carlos Johnson the catch. Jamel Smith made the stop. What Temple has to do offensively they can't turn the ball over. They cannot. They have to play a near perfect game to beat Virginia Tech and also they have to protect Devin Scott and they're going to look to do that. A lot of screens a lot of draws and a lot of three step passing. And it looks like a lot of improvising right now by Scott at the line of scrimmage. On third and five. A quick throw caught by Godfrey down to the five very close to the first down. Nick Sorensen made the stop for Virginia Tech. Rich what I like early is there the Temple Owls are not giving Virginia Tech any opportunity to get close to their quarterback and hit him. They're throwing the ball quick a lot of these screens a lot of these draws. They have a heck of a game plan here in this first drive. Bobby Wallace really felt confident as confident as you can feel as a four touchdown underdog coming into a ball game with a team that is two games away from a national championship game. Scott scramble. Scott he'll keep it. He is out of bounds. Devin Scott at the two yard line. Ben Taylor got a hand on him. And it'll bring up second down. The Temple Owls are two and seven, but Gino in their last four football games, they've played very well. They played very well, and the big reason is Devin Scott. I think both, both he and Michael Vick on the other side of the football, they have that escapability where they can get outside, break contain, and still pick up a few yards on the scrambles. Second and goal. Godfrey. 
still on his feet, and he is in for the touchdown. How about that? Marcus Godfrey, the senior from Philadelphia, and Temple goes 80 yards. A 6-0 lead. Rich, that was great second effort by Marcus Godfrey. It almost looked like the Virginia Tech defense was kind of standing around watching for everybody else to make a play, and Godfrey just kept kept his leg drive going and ends up fighting to get in the end zone. Temple lined up in a little swinging gate look before the extra point attempt. Cap Poklemba is the field goal kicker. And he'll attempt the point and hit it. The Temple Owls pulled off the upset maybe of the century last year. And right now, they're on the board first. Marcus Godfrey into the end zone. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Acura. Cars are our passion. Engineering is our art. And by BarnesandNoble.com. If we don't have your book, nobody does. A summer-like day in Philadelphia. 61 degrees at kickoff. Frank Beamer and the Hokies have yet to touch the football. They just watched Temple go 80 yards on eight plays. A short kickoff. And this is Jared Ferguson. Jared Ferguson out across the 45 yard line. Great field position for Virginia Tech. Just take a look here. Marcus Goffrey taking the handoff, makes one guy miss, just keeps his leg drive, able to make pull three guys into the end zone. That's great second effort to score that touchdown. Michael Vick at the controls. The redshirt freshman has had an outstanding season. The top rated passer in the Big East. And the Hokies are going to get the football at the 45 yard line. Temple was offsides on the kickoff. Virginia Tech declines. Rich, that's not a good way to start. They can't afford these mistakes on special teams and give Virginia Tech a short field today. Shotgun for Vic. Blitz coming. Steps up. And they'll get him at the 46 yard line. It's actually a gain of a couple. Raheem Brock made the stop. The Virginia Tech offense is the best in the Big East. 434 yards per game. And Chiron Stith does it on the ground. 105 a game for the junior running back. Andre Davis is the guy they want to stretch the field. 26 catches, five touchdowns, 26 yards per catch. The leader up front is Keith Short. It's a good offensive line, and Short is the only senior. On second down, Vic again flushed out. He'll tuck it to the sidelines. Vic is loose. He's 30. Michael Vic is 10. He will score. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. 53 yards. Rich, that's exactly what Temple defense couldn't do. They have to contain Michael Vick, keep him in the pocket, don't let him break contain, and get in the secondary running with the football. He just breaks contain. He has 4 3 speed. He, along with Corey Moore, that's wide receiver speed. And as soon as he breaks in the clear, he's a heck of a, a runner with the football. The extra point is good. Michael Vick has lived up to the hype this year. And he answers the Temple score. 53 yards. The Virginia Tech Hokies, number two in the country, need a win and a big win. Right now, they're tied with Temple, 7-0. 7 7-7, seven, seven, number two, Virginia Tech, answering in a heartbeat. Temple scored on their first drive. They went 80 yards, and then Michael Vick rambled 53 in the Hokie fans. Breathing a little bit better now. 
Frank Beamer in his 13th year. And Virginia Tech, and what a run he's had. Bowl games their last six seasons. Jimmy Kimball puts it very, very deep. When you let Michael Vick get outside, it's real dangerous. Rich, that was a heck of a run by Michael Vick, but Virginia Tech may have got away with the holding penalty. Penalty. Here you see Matt Lair on the inside. You'll see a loop. And just he takes down the offensive lineman. That to me looks like a little bit of a hold. Gives Vic the opportunity to break contain. It looked like a lot of a hold. <laughs> it was a takedown. Three point takedown. The Owls now, their own 20. It's a very young Temple team. Lots of sophomores and freshmen in the skill positions. Inside handoff to Godfrey. And Godfrey with a nine yard pickup is down to the 29 yard line. Michael Hawks made the stop. Just your average two play drive. Rich, the Temple Owls have to make Virginia Tech earn every yard. They can't allow those big plays, whether through the air or Michael Vick running the football, to have a chance in this football game. Taking his time. Swings it out. Tenardo Sharps short of the first down. Corey Bird made the stop. Rich, I like the fact that they're throwing a lot of short passes. They've had a little bit of success with the few draws they've run inside. But what they have to do, there has to come a time where they're going to start push, pushing the football down the field. So far, they've kept Corey Moore out of the backfield and off of Devin Scott's back. Scott, two third down completions on the last drive, but on third and one, he's running out of time. It'll be five yards regardless. And I think you can credit some of that to Corey Moore. Well, what Virginia Tech defense did. Before the snap of the ball, they lined up in just a normal 4-3 and then shifted down into the old Bear defense, the 46. Devin Scott trying to audible, didn't have enough time to get his team in a good position and a good play. That would be the old Chicago Bear defense. The old Buddy Ryan made it famous. He used it in this stadium a few times as well. It really changes the situation. It's third down and six down. And here comes the blitz. They're bringing everyone. And Scott throws it away. And that's grounding. Ben Taylor on the blitz. There was no one, absolutely no one in the vicinity of Devin Scott's pass. In college football, different in that respect. In the pros, you break contain. You just have to throw it at the line of scrimmage. And college football still has to be at a player. No grounding. The penalty is the loss of down, spot of the foul. Fourth down. Loss of down is not the big deal. Spot of the foul is huge. Spot of the foul. Now it's going to bring the Virginia Tech special teams back into play, and they have a shot when you have that short field of blocking this punt. Garvin Ringwelski is a true freshman punter. Virginia Tech is coming, and he gets it off. Ricky Hall watches it bounce, and it's excellent field position. For Virginia Tech on the Temple 39 yard line. Tomorrow night, eight. The Hokies right back to work. Stiff. Chiron Stiff inside the 30. A game of nine. Sean Lacey made the stop. Rich, you always need a little help for your friends. Check out Jared Fer Ferguson, the fullback, who opens the hole. Look at the nice block there. Gets a stalemate on Taylor Suman, the, the outside linebacker, and gives Stiff all kinds of room to run. Second and one. Vic is going to throw it towards the end zone. Almost picked off. 
should have been picked off. Leon Washington had it right in his hands. Emmett Johnson was the intended receiver. But Vic just trying to throw a simple post corner route. Washington in great position. Should have came up with this interception. And these are the opportunities that the Temple Owls can't afford not to take advantage of. Hit him right in the hands. So now it's third down and one. Still hit and dropped, but he's close to the first down. Good penetration by Raheem Brock and LeVar Talley. Rich going back to that second down and one. The one thing I do like about the play call and Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator for Virginia Tech, taking a chance, throwing deep on second one field. And hey, we're going to pick up the short yardage, the third and one situation that's not complete. They'll stretch it. And the Hokies are short. So it is fourth down. And Virginia Tech is going to go for it. Up in the coach's box for Virginia Tech. Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator. Thank you. The Hokies have done a lot of things right this year. And on fourth down, they are eight of ten. That's amazing. Vic straight ahead. He's got it as he falls forward to the 28 yard line. Nice call by Coach Bustle. Temple's defense is not bad. Their strength up front, Dan Klecko, and yes, that's Joe's son. He's a good one, a true freshman, and Pepe Pichette, the senior tackle. Taylor Suman is their leading tackler, 118 per game, in, or 118 on the season. He's just a sophomore. Now, Sean Martin is listed as a safety, but he'll play as an outside linebacker. Gino, this is really a 4-4 look. They want to pressure. They're going to come up in an eight-man front and try to contain Vic and make him throw the football. The bad thing is he's going to Rick, Andre Davis and Ricky Hall. Option. Vic down to the 23-yard line. LeVard Talley made the stop. Five-yard pickup for the redshirt freshman out of Newport News, Virginia. And Coach Beamer told us yesterday he shows excellent poise. Only a redshirt freshman. He's only 19 years old. Look at that. Last six games, seven touchdowns and no interceptions. That's been key for the Virginia Tech Hokies. Stiff. Breaks through the blitz and he's inside the 20. Right on the sticks, close to another first down. Raheem Brock made the stop. Rich, the Owls are going to crowd the line of scrimmage and play the eight-man front. One thing they have to do, if they're going to do it, they have to stop the run because that is what an eight-man front is designed to do. Stop the run and put your corner, put your corners on an island, but Temple hasn't been able to stop the run even in that eight-man front. This time, the Hokies are a little bit closer, but still short. Like just that tape holding the chain. One together. link. <laughs> It'll be second down and a link. One thing Frank Beamer did for Michael Vick last year, Gino, was they took him on all the road trips. They included him in all the meetings. They made sure that he was as much of a part of the team as a redshirt quarterback could be. And Beamer has felt that that has really helped him not get overwhelmed by everything. Oh, sure. Nothing's new to him. All the road trips are the same. He's gone through it. He's got a year under his belt traveling. It's helped him out tremendously. Third down and a win. 
they'll go from the shotgun. Ferguson, the fullback. And he's got the first down to the 15-yard line. Jarrett Ferguson. Sean Martin made the stop for the Temple Owls. Rich, let's take, take a look. This is what I'm talking about, an eight-man front. Here is the box here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You only have three defenders in coverage behind it. That is your front to stop the run. And the, and the Owls have still not been able to stop the run of Virginia Tech. Andre Davis in motion. Stiff to the 10. Sean Lacey made the stop. Interesting, last year, Gino, when Virginia Tech lost the Temple, the Hokies absolutely ran wild. 337 yards on the ground last year. But what they didn't do is they didn't put the nail in the coffin, as they say, because they had every opportunity. They fumbled inside the five-yard line, ended up dropping a touchdown pass at the end of the game that would have won the football game. Virginia Tech actually had a 17-0 lead in that ball game. Stiff outside. And he's dragged down at the seven-yard line. Kevin Harvey made the stop. And the damage today for Virginia Tech has been on the ground. Already 88 yards. A big part of that, though, the 53-yard run by Michael Vick on only the second play of the game. And we're looking at another short yarded situation. More than a link, it's third and one. Stiff. Oh, is he popped right at the five? Boy, you can hear that one. A Keith Staples, a sophomore linebacker, along with Danny Klecko, made the stop. They collect on the interior, just pile, pile things up, and Suman comes in and makes a nice tackle. Another fourth and short. The reason Virginia Tech goes for these, they're the second best team in the country. They have to go for these fourth and short situations. Nine of 11 on fourth down this year. is Kendrick the question is did he get over I don't know I don't think so the Owls may have held Rich I don't I don't think he got over and the deep the defensive quarterback defensive coordinator excuse me Raymond Monica told us yesterday he goes we've had a tendency to bend but sometimes good things happen to us in, in bad situations there is one of them, fourth and short able to hold Virginia Tech Taylor Suman, the sophomore linebacker, part of that big stop. Here you see just penetration by the Al front four, and then the linebackers come in. Andre Kendrick able to hold the running back short of the first down. Look at that. That's a great, nice swarm around by the defense, just swarming the football. A dangerous spot on the field for the Temple offense. Ben Taylor, the first to get there. Jason McKee on the carry. Taylor is the only underclassman on this very good Virginia Tech defense. He's a sophomore out of Bel Air, Ohio. The rest are all seniors and a few juniors sprinkled in. Rich, and now's the situation second down and long. You have to pick up some yardage because of the Virginia Tech special teams. If Scott throws one away here, it could be two points. Lots of time over the middle. It's caught by Jamal Wallace. He's planted at the nine. They're short of the first down by six. We head to the studios, Reese Davis. Nothing. Thanks, Reese. Seven all here. Third and seven. Temple deep in their own end. And here comes Virginia Tech. Quick throw to the outside. Muckerson can't hold them. Fourth down. Quick wide receiver screen. Devin Scott hits Muckerson right in the hands. Like I said, 
opportunities when they knock these Temple Owls, they can't afford not to take advantage of them. And for the second time, Garvin Ringwelski is going to have to punt from his end zone. 32 yards on his first kick. And he wobbles this one out. A fair catch made by Ricky Hall at the 46 yard line. Number two, Virginia Tech and Temple tied at seven. The Hokies have come to Philadelphia, and the Temple Owls were waiting for him. 7 7. And again, great field position for Virginia Tech. Vic, his catch, Hall, and Ricky Hall out of bounds at the 21 yard line. Philip Shepard made the stop. Just a nice wide receiver screen. Michael Vick, play action to Stiff, hits the wide receiver. See the tackle out in front of him. That, that, that may have been another questionable holding call out there, Rich. First and ten. Here are the numbers we talked about. Field position, their own 47. This is Andre Kendrick. Kendrick, first and second effort. Gets him to the 18 yard line and two yards. Tonight on a true freshman. He had a good coach growing up. A former Temple All American named Joe. Vic scrambling. Still alive. Looking. He'll keep it. 15 and out of bounds. Short of the first down. Taylor Suman made another stop. Seven yards on the pickup. That is amazing. Michael Vick steps up, nothing there, gets the pressure, able to 360 spin, breaks contained, and he has the speed where he pulls up to even throw. The defender has to break down and cover him, and then he just bursts right by him and runs right by him. Third down and two. He's stuffed again. This may be another fourth down and short. Sean Lacey made the hit. And I think Frank Beamer has seen enough. On comes the kicking team. Shane Graham for the extra point. Well, you don't want to get down there inside that red zone and come, up, come away without points too often. And I think in a fourth down and two, maybe three situation, you have to kick this field goal. The kick by Graham is good. And so Shane Graham from 29 yards gives Virginia Tech the lead. And Frank Beamer's Hokies are on top. That was only the third time all year, Gino, that they had trailed in a football game. The 7 0 lead by Temple. Well, they trailed to Miami early on last week, but boy, did they put a whooping on them at the end of the game. Let's go down below Don McPherson, Donnie. And Rich, as can be expected, each bench is somewhat different down here on the field. The Virginia Tech sideline is very methodical. Even with the fourth down plays and the big plays by Vic, they don't get too excited. They know in order to get a national championship, they're going to have to play four quarters and play four down football. On the other side, Temple, with every big play, the emotion is running high, and the more they hang around this football game and, and able to stop them on fourth down, they're going to get a little bit of momentum. Donnie, yesterday when we talked to, to Frank Beamer, he was worried about emotion playing in this stadium, which obviously is not full, wasn't it? it he, he exactly right, and there is not a lot of noise down here on the field if you're a Temple fan or a Temple ball player. But on their sideline, that's where the noise was, and that's where the enthusiasm was. When they were going in for their score, their players were chanting as if they were fans in the stands. Bernardo Sharps on one knee. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And Temple has yet to return a kick yet today. Jimmy Kibble makes sure of that by putting it deep in the end zone. Enter Devin Scott. All right, Gino, let's grade out this Temple offense so far. What They've hit the big play. They had that 80-yard drive. What have they done since then? Well, I think they've been 
forced into some bad situations inside their own 10 yard line that short shrinkage shrinks your playbook some so I think now let's see if they can sustain another big drive like they did on the first drive inside screen Wow Carlos Johnson hammered by Corey Bird it's a loss of four Corey Bird was not biting on that fake draw wide receiver screen one bit. <laughs> he came right up and just made a nice little hit. Final seconds of the first quarter. We are done with one from the vet, number two, Virginia Tech. Leeds Temple, 10 to 7. Michael Vick and the number two Hokies are on top. In Philadelphia, Temple with the football. Number two Virginia Tech up 10 7. Devin Scott facing it. Second down and ball. Scott stepping up and throwing, and it's picked off. Intercepted, Larry Austin up and over and in touchdown. The seventh defensive touchdown this year. That was a good play by Larry Austin, but that's what pressure from the front four forces a quarterback to make mistakes. Scott in the pocket, getting a little bit of pressure, trying to get rid of the ball, can't put enough mustard on the ball on that out route, and Austin able to cut in behind the receiver and take it back for six. Extra point good. And the Virginia Tech defense has scored a touchdown. What else is new? Since Frank Beamer's been around, 57 defense and special teams touchdowns. As I mentioned, that's the seventh touchdown that this defense has scored this year. You see Scott sitting in his shotgun, takes a snap. Look at the pressure. That pocket just collapses on him. He tries to just throw it out there, can't get enough on it. And Austin able to undercut the receiver and take it back for six points. He looked like Steve Austin going into the end zone. You know, that was a late call in terms of getting him in the end zone. I'm not sure he was in the end zone, Gino. Well, I'm not sure if he was in the end zone. There's the pressure. Look at Corey Moore. They got three guys on him trying to block him. And they still, he's able to still collapse the pocket. And he had a nice block as well. That's what Virginia Tech, why they are right now the second best team in the country as far as the polls go, because they're going to score on offense, they're going to score on defense, and they're going to score on special teams. And when their offense has struggled, their defense always seems to have a big game, produce a couple of scores. And Rich, always the national championship team at the end of the year tends to have the best defense in the country and Virginia Tech ranked second in scoring they're only giving up 10.6 points per game. Jimmy Kibble this time Tenardo Sharps will get a chance at a return. And Sharps now to the 32 yard line. Derek Panella made the stop. Good work, Derek. That's loose kid. Let's head to the studios and Reese Davis. Nothing. Thanks, Reese. <laughs> Temple with a football. This is their best field position all day to start a drive. And they go nowhere on first down. Well, another dad is very proud of his son. Derek Pinella, son of Seattle Man uh, Mariner manager Luke Pinella. He's a sophomore. Every time I see Derek, He's gained another 10 or 15 pounds. He's, he came to the program, I think, as a fullback. Then he moved to linebacker. Now he's a defensive end, and he's a big part of the special team for Virginia Tech, which is saying something, the way they play on special teams. Another quick screen to Sean Dillard, and he's out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Chris Cyrus made the stop. 
Rich, what Virginia Tech has done, and Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator, told us yesterday, he likes to rotate the defensive linemen. Now they got the second group. Well, it, I mean, for them, their second group's like the starting unit on other ball clubs in the country. So they're giving Corey Moore, Bradley, and Nathaniel Williams a little bit of a breather early on in the game. And that's why in the fourth quarter, they tend to dominate teams. Temple does not have the right personnel on the field. And in the ball game at quarterback now is Kevin Harvey. Harvey just into the ball game. He was the starting quarterback last year. He's the starting cornerback on the defense. He was shifted to defense last year. And it has four interceptions on the season as the starting cornerback. And he's headed back off the field. The uh, these element of surprise was lost, <laughs> so to speak, with the uh, penalty. And so Devin Scott is back. Third down, 12. Looking, throwing, and a great catch in traffic. Sean Dillard, the true freshman, made the catch. First down, Temple. A nice throw by Devin Scott, and he just got walloped by Corey Moore right after he threw that football. There's a lot of hard hitting going on out there by this Virginia Tech defense. Here you see Scott get flushed out of the pocket, able to break contain with his feet, and watch Corey Moore just. Puts a nice looking on him right there at the end of it. See Dillard goes up, gets his legs taken out for him by Corey Burton. Temple keeps it on the ground. Jason McKee, the sophomore, who had a big touchdown run in the win in Blacksburg last year. 17 7. Virginia Tech on top. Temple scored first. Tim Leach, the big offensive lineman, has lost his lid. And Temple showing a little signs of life here on a nice little drive. They moved the ball with some success here in this drive. Leach's helmet broken. Hard keeping a helmet on that guy. I think Temple's going to have to burn a timeout. And they'll be faced with second down and about seven. At stake in this football game, you know, everyone has talked about it coming into the week. That Virginia Tech not only has to win the game, but they must win this game big to help themselves in the BCS. That's an incredible amount of pressure to put on a team and, and say you've got to win a game by X amount of points. I think the media is saying that but I, I'm sure coach Beamer and his staff has his players thinking hey all we can do is control what we do on the football field as long as we go out there play a good game and win don't be concerned with blowing a team out because they can't they don't control the polls. No and they don't control the BCS as well. Let's see how Leach lost his helmet. He's working on Corey Moore. Corey got away. Look at that. Well, I'll tell you what, Virginia Tech has gotten away with two or three on the interior line, and that, my friend, should be a 15 yard penalty at the very least. At the very least. And that's, you know, you don't like to see plays like that, but if these officials, hopefully they can see if something like that goes on and start calling these penalties. Second down and six. Whistle and movement. There were three seconds left on the play clock. Good ball. False start. And Temple Offense. moved. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. Dave. Derek Henson, apparently the guilty party. Second in the NCAA in scoring defense. Third in total yards. Fifth. In rushing allowed. And in all of those categories, they are first in the Big East Conference. Most important, 
the scoring defense, only giving up a little more than 10 points per game. On second and 11, here comes the blitz. Scott better get rid of it. And he goes down rather meekly at the 34 yard line. That's a huge loss. Rich, one thing with a, a young quarterback like Scott, he's only a sophomore. Virginia Tech shows an all out blitz before the snap, so he should see that with the shotgun. I think he saw it late here, expected some more pressure. And I think he still had an opportunity to still throw that football away. Looks like he tripped over Dave Yov Yovanovich, his right tackle. He is 8 of 12 when he's able to stay on his feet. Third and 20. Flags go down, as does Marcus Godfrey. Michael Hawks made the stop. And this whole drive stalled because of that second medium that they had, and then a false start puts them in a, in a second long. Then they're able, the Virginia Tech defense is able to blitz and even put them in a third and even longer. There's a look at Tim Leach, who is still not back in the ballgame. They still haven't fixed his helmet. It doesn't seem quite fair, does it, Gene? <laughs> Virginia Tech's offside, so. And another penalty on Temple, so they'll replay the down. More ripped Leach's helmet off and apparently broken. Well, I'm sure those little buckles that hold the face mask off, Moore may have broke one of those when he pulled Leach's helmet off. That or the chin strap on his helmet. Offside on the defense. It's a five yard penalty. Then we have a dead ball, personal foul on the offense, 15 yards, third down. Here's a look at the personal foul. And so Temple gets flagged. Theo Ross doing the pushing. Moore's helmet stayed on. Leach is back in the ball game. His helmet is fixed. And these five penalties for 48 yards, Temple cannot afford any negative plays. They have to continue to have positive. They can't have these negative plays. And then when they get the opportunity to make a big catch, make an interception, they have to take advantage of it. There's Leach, and he's lined up across from Moore on this third down and 30. This Temple drive is is moving backwards in a hurry. Scott running out of time and they've got him. Nathaniel Williams. Let's go to the studios and Reese Davis. Reese. Sack. Thanks, Reese. Temple just lost 30 yards on that last drive. And Virginia Tech is going to have to take a timeout. Frank Beamer's not real happy about it. Against Virginia Tech, Gino, you have to be able to, if not win the field position game, at least keep it even. And right now, Temple is losing on the scoreboard and in the field position game. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile dealers. And by Circuit City. Answers in every department, low prices all over the store. Veteran Stadium, the Eagles and the Colts will play here tomorrow. Right now it's Virginia Tech and Temple. And Ringwelski gets this one away and a good kick. Though not a good bounce for the Owls. And Virginia Tech will have it at their own 46 yard line. 39 yards on the punt from Garvin Ringwelski. Later today on ABC. Virginia Tech, a 10 point lead with the football. Chiron Stiff around the left side. And Chiron Stiff is inside the 40 and down to the 35 yard line. And he came a hair away from breaking that one. 18 yards on the pickup. And the reason he picked up so many yards, Temple gets caught in a the blitz there. 
the Virginia Tech front line able to give Stiff a crease. And there you see in a blitz, you make that one guy miss, and it turns into a big play. Again, Stiff to the 34 yard line to the studios, Reese Davis. What's up, Reese? Rich, first we'll go. How about those Hoosiers? Virginia Tech, 117 to two now on the rushing yards. Second down, lots of time. Vick over the middle, picked off, intercepted, down at the four yard line. Kevin Harvey now has five interceptions this year. And Vick trying to get the ball to Andre Davis on a post late down the middle. He had Harvey beat. All he has to do, Vic has all the time in the world. The offensive line is playing great for Virginia Tech. He's sitting there, sees Davis come open, just throws it a little bit behind him, and Harvey in position to pick the pass off. There you see Vic just moving his feet, but unfortunately throws the ball a little bit behind Davis. If he throws that ball out in front of it, it's six points. Matt DeVito is the new quarterback for Temple. And the Owls bust one across the 10. Marcus Godfrey. DeVito is a guy that could come off the bench. He rallied Temple for a win against Pittsburgh in the 98 season. And Rich, the reason you're going to probably see two quarterbacks at Temple is going from an all out option team to conversely throwing the ball almost every down. You have to make that transition to get a throwing quarterback in your program. Godfrey again. Corey Moore made the stop. First down Temple. And the Owls get some much needed breathing room. Out to their 16 yard line. And on the last drive, they moved the ball with some success. They moved it from the 20 to midfield. And then they get a couple penalties against them, a personal foul. They lose 30 yards. That's what the Owls, they can't afford to do that on offense. Ward does not have a sack today. Godfrey. Oh. Clobbered at the 13-yard line. Chris Cyrus, the first to get there, along with Jake Housewright. Here's a look at Cyrus. The senior out of Rushburg, Virginia. Tell you what, that play shows exactly the kind of speed that Virginia Tech defense as a whole has. Just takes the, the play action, the draw, and the Tech defense just swarms Godfrey on that outside, doesn't let him break contain. Pokey showed this quick throw. Nice catch, but it won't go for much yardage. Terrence Leftwich. And it will be third down and long. DeVito is out of Westport, Connecticut. Bobby Wallace in his second year. What a great run he had in North Alabama. Three national titles. He was voted the NCAA Division II Coach of the Century. Actually, the quarter century. But that's still impressive. Very impressive. Very impressive. I'm sure with time he will have some success here at Temple. Vito going deep and it's incomplete he was looking for Jamal Wallace Ike Charlton on the coverage and Ike Charlton had great coverage on Jamal Wallace that whole play just a little stutter move off the line of scrimmage and Charlton just running stride for stride with Wallace in position to turn to intercept that play, but Wallace does a good job of becoming the defender at the end of that play and knocking the ball away from Charlton, not allowing him to pick up that interception. Great Welski on three kicks has yet to have one in danger. And the Hokies don't come after him. They'll go for the return on a kick that lands near midfield. 
will have to watch the Owls down it at the 42-yard line. So Temple at two and seven is hanging in against Frank Beamer and the Hokies. It's 17-7. Virginia Tech is number two in the country and Temple is not but the Owls are playing well hanging in Michael Vick and the Hokies get it at their own 41 yard line option he'll pitch it it's Kendrick and Kendrick is inside the 40 and out of bounds no flags Sean Martin made the stop 20 yards on the pickup. Rich, that was a good play, but that looked like Plecko broke free and had a chance. It almost looked to me like a holding. Again, critical holding call or non-call against Virginia Tech, able to turn that play that could have been a negative into a positive for them. Andre Kendrick and Chiron Stiff. Rotating at the tailback spot. So far, they're racking up big yardage. Big throw. Andre Davis. He can fly. And Davis down to the 20 yard line. Kevin Harvey made the stop. First down, Hokies on an 18 yard pickup. What's most impressive about this Virginia Tech offense is Michael Vick is fast enough, they can run the option on one play. He's got a great enough arm, a little play action fake, throw the wide receiver screen here. And you got Andre Davis averaging over 25 yards a catch, who has the speed to break a game wide open. Bobby Wallace is trying to prevent that right now. Vic. Scrambling. Got him. It's Klecko. Danny Klecko with his seventh sack. The true freshman. Klecko has been around the quarterback this whole game. He just hasn't gotten to him in enough time. That's because Vic has that speed. But here you see just fighting and fighting and fighting. Ends up coming free and getting to Vic. A 12-yard loss. He's been around the game all of his life. His father played here. Jason Temple, and of course, went on to star in the NFL. Quarterback draw. Vic makes one miss. And he's inside the 20. He'll pick up about 14 yards. And Keith Staples made the stop. He'll bring up third down. You see the quarterback draw. You see Klecko fighting through. Questionable three-point takedown. Yeah, they I, I tell you what, they're getting Virginia Tech, I think, I mean they're playing well, but I think they're getting away with some holding penalties here. Very critical holding penalties. Vic for the end zone for Davis. It is caught and picked off. Harvey got another one. His second of the ball game. And the Owls hold again. Kevin Harvey and the Temple Owls hanging in against the number two team in the country. Virginia Tech by 10, but the Owls won't give up. And this is going against Temple. Ball, false start, offense, five yard, replay to them. Here you'll see on the interception, Vic has all the time in the world, just kind of lacks a days, days ago, doesn't really step into that throw, under throws his wide receiver, and gives Harvey a chance to pick the play off. There you see, I mean, he realizes what he did, but he's only a freshman. We got to realize that he's only 19 years old out there leading one of the best teams in the country. Temple right now there's some discussion with the officials I think Temple felt that they moved while Virginia Tech was across the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. 
Foul is offside on the defense after further review. And it's a five yard mark off against Frank Beamer. And that play somewhat made popular in the NFL by Derek Thomas from Kansas City with the noise and trying to fake like you're going to rush. It pulls the offensive lineman out of his stance into an offside call. Handoff, Tenardo Sharks out of bounds, and he'll lose yardage down to the field. Don McPherson, Donnie. Hey, Rich, you've called that name Dan Klucko many times. I'm joined by his dad, former All Pro with the New York Jets, Joe Klucko. What's it like watching your son? Exhilarating, it really is. And he's doing well. That's the best part about it. Danny came in here, you know, really not expecting to play a whole lot, maybe his freshman year, but he came in, made a big impact, and uh, he's my kid. But he, he's a tough little kid. You played here yourself at Temple. You watch this program. When we talk to the coaches, they talk about Danny having that leverage. It reminds me a lot of the leverage that you had playing on the inside. Do you find yourself coaching him up to play the game? Well, I don't want to say anything, but I think he had a pretty good teacher. You know what I mean? Uh, Danny does what he's told. And, you know, I see Danny do things that big time ball players play. Guys who really know what they're doing, and Danny plays like that. And he executes it. So, uh, you know, as far as from the execution part, the, you know, the, the skill part, he, he's got it. What, what about this Temple program? You see Coach Wallace come in here. He starts to turn things around. What's your impressions of the program? Well, the biggest thing about why Danny came here, really, and I left a lot of decision to him. Uh, you know, he asked me a lot of questions, but was going to good people. And Bobby Wallace is what I call good people. Comes with a winning tradition, comes with a lot of good baggage, you know, and he has an idea on what he wants. Temple's now putting together a whole lot of things behind him. New complex for the football team and everything. So they have a lot to look forward to the program. Thanks a lot, Joe. Good to see you again. My pleasure. They have a third and seven to look forward to here. The pass is completed. Joe Camus, the tight end, with the catch, but he's going to be short of the first down. Jake Housewright made the stop. And Temple will be forced to kick. Just short of the 30 yard line. It's fourth down and about a yard. Garvin Ringwelski to punt. Virginia Tech came after him, and the true freshman got it off. Ricky Hall, and he swallowed up at the 34 yard line. The Temple Owls with Joe's kid doing quite well. The Temple Owls against number two Virginia Tech. 17-7, Hokies on top. The Owl against the Gobbler. Worst field position of the day for Virginia Tech. And Stiff is hammered. Pepe Pichette. Made the stop, the senior out of Florence, New Jersey. Tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern on ESPN, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series finale. Top of 500 title. It begins at 11.30 a.m. with NASCAR Today on ESPN2. Second down, 10. Vic. To the sideline, got it. Andre Davis escapes. He can fly. He will score. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Sixty five yards. And Andre Davis shows us that power and speed that he has, able to fight off a, a tackle there after he makes the catch and just outraces everybody to the end zone. Davis, who's averaging 26 yards a catch. And those 65 yard touchdowns were obviously up there. Pretty good for the average. Graham's extra point is good. Michael Vick to Andre Davis. Number two, Virginia Tech trying to pull away from the Temple Owls. They're up 24-7.
This was an interesting week for Frank Beamer and his Hokies. They were preparing for a team that was two and seven, a team that had struggled mightily over the last few years. But it was a team that somehow found a way to beat Virginia Tech and ruin their perfect season last year. And the Hokies on top. Sharks lost the football. Who's got it? I think Temple got it back. Tyron Johnson on the bottom of the pile with the loose ball. Rich Temple was able to upset Virginia Tech last year, but this late in the season, you see the Owls fighting for it and Kyron Johnson coming up with it. But this late in the season, they realize what's on the line with the national championship in the balance. Mac DeVito still in a quarterback. Little swing pass. Marcus Godfrey out to the 20 yard line to the studios, Reese Davis. And Rich, coming up at halftime, we're going to take you down to Gainesville, just about two hours away from kickoff down there now. And John Makovic also weighs in on what Steve Spurrier's biggest obstacle might be. We'll update you on all of the rivalry games on Rivalry Saturday and try to lend some perspective to the BCS, as well as those just trying to get bowl eligible. All of that coming up at the half. All right, thanks, Reese. At the vet, Temple played well early in this one, but they are fading fast. Godfrey now to the 21 yard line Michael Hawks and Chris Cyrus the stop let's go back to the touchdown pass by Michael Vick here you see finds Davis they're throwing at Kevin Harvey Harvey able to pick off a couple passes earlier but Davis with the speed and the power once he breaks his tackle no one's going to catch him look at that he breaks through two defenders tackles on the Owls and able to outrace everybody to the end zone. And like I was saying earlier, Virginia Tech realizes this late in the season when you're 9 and 0 and you're number 2 in the country, every game is essentially your national championship game. You can't afford to let any of them slip away. And maybe every point today will help you in the bowl championship series standings. Because when the computers start figuring in your margin of victory Virginia Tech needs all the help they can get because the team that's right on their tail Nebraska has two more games left Nebraska's at Colorado and then they've got Texas Nebraska's strength of schedule is much much better than Virginia Tech's and that is helping them in this BCS standings because obviously Nebraska has a loss Virginia Tech doesn't. And if Nebraska wins out and Virginia Tech wins out, there might be a lot of disappointed Hokie fans. That one's picked off. Michael Hawks with the interception. DeVito threw it right to him. And Virginia Tech is on quite a roll right now. And Rich, I don't really understand the BCS and, and the total points, but I do know if Virginia Tech, if they finish this game and able to win next week they should be playing for it all in the Sugar Bowl. Here you see DeVito just an interior screen to the wide receiver but doesn't realize there's a lot of defenders in there when you're throwing the ball on the inside. Bobby Wallace needs somebody to make a play. Hokies trying to finish the half with a flourish. Vic will keep it. And he runs right into Calvin Wilkinson and Dan Klecko. Clock continues to roll. And the Hokies in their two minute drill. This one caught Emmett Johnson short of the first down so the clock will continue to roll until Vic stops it with a timeout. Temple is down big Gino but they've got Virginia Tech right where they want him. 
in four of the wins in Bob, uh, Bobby Wallace has won four games at Temple in three of those wins they have come from behind and come from behind in rather big ways. So they got them right where they want. That's them, what huh? I mean. Maybe not. Well I think it's this is a little, little bit different ball club. I think when you're facing a, a Virginia Tech team that that is tops in all three of their phases offense defense and special teams it's very very tough to win and to beat them you don't want to get down and I think Temple's made a few mistakes gotten themselves and had some penalties called against them those are things they can't afford stay with us at halftime the Buick halftime report with Reese Davis and the coach John Makovic Temple Owls appearing on national television they tell us for the first time since the 1979 Garden State Bowl in which they beat the California Golden Bears. Was Joe Pleco playing here then? No. I think Joe was out in the early to mid 70s. But hey his son's here and Dan's playing very well today. He's had a great year. Quarterback draw, Vic is caught, and he's short of the first down. He lost the football. Temple thinks they have it. Virginia Tech has got to hustle to get the field goal unit on. Bobby Wallace thought his team had a turnover. He is a good one. Three time all Big East pick. 34 yards. And the Hokies, a 27 7 lead. Take a look at that last play. This is exactly what the Owls were talking about. They thought they had a fumble here by Michael Vick. Oh, they did. The ball came out before his knee was down. There you see, no knee down. The ball is out. That is a fumble. And that cost Temple three points. And, you know, those are things. It's, it's tough enough to beat this Virginia Tech team. But then when you're not getting calls go your way, it makes it even tougher. LeVar Talley made the stop. Not a good day so far if you're a Temple Owl. Twenty-seven-seven. Jimmy Kibble to kick off. And it's a ground ball to short. Taken there by Tyron Johnson. And the first half is over. Virginia Tech playing like the number two team in the country. They lead Temple. Big time. Let's head to the studios. Reese and John. 27 7. Number two, Virginia Tech on top of the Temple Owls. Rich Waltz along with Gino Toretta and Don McPherson. Temple actually scored first in this ball game, but then that man got busy. Michael Vick with a 53 yard touchdown run and then a 65 yard touchdown pass to Andre Davis. As we look at some of the pictures from the first half. This was Vick on that long scramble of 53 yards. And Rich, every, I think this is game is everything is advertised. Virginia Tech is the dominant team, but what's not shown is a couple questionable penalties non holding call and then a fumble that wasn't called on Michael Vick late in the game. That was a big interception by Larry Austin who took it back for a touchdown. And this is Vick finding Andre Davis the sophomore who did a lot of it on his own. He's showing excellent power and speed and that's why Andre Davis is averaging over 25 yards per catch this year this season. The numbers from the early precincts are in. And it looks like our exit poll shows Virginia Tech is well out in front in terms of yardage 
And I think in terms of the BCS, they need to win this game, many people feel, convincingly. Cullen Hawkins, one of the up backs, and Cullen Hawkins breaks loose. He's down to the 27-yard line. Randy Washington made the stop 58 yards on the return by Cullen Hawkins. When's the last time you saw an up back take one almost to the house so to speak. Well I'm sure the Owls were trying to avoid a long return try to pin Hawkins down on a short kick. He's still able to break through make a couple defenders miss on Temple. There you see the kicker just giving a last ditch effort. Virginia Tech had great field position for the entire first half. And Chiron Stiff is inside the 25 yard line. First half possessions. Look at the field position. Averaging their own 44. When you can do that as the second ranked team in the country, the Temple Owls are giving Virginia Tech a short field to work every drive. Two interceptions, along with a touchdown pass for Vic, out of the pocket, and he's stopped. Vic hit from behind. Calvin Wilkinson got him as he cut back. And Rich, watching that first half, it's it's not that Virginia Tech is just dominating this game on offense. I think they got a, a score by the defense. They're getting contributions from all phases of their team. Third down. Blitz coming. Vic steps up. They'll get him again. And the Temple Owls, Dan Klecko at the bottom there. That's his second sack of the day, his eighth of the season. Calvin Wilkinson will get a half sack on that as well. Like his father Joe said in the first half, you had a pretty good teacher. And I think, you know, that helps when you grow up with your father being a three-time Pro Bowler and, a, and just a great defensive lineman for the New York Jets. He's been coached by the best that Joe's had. And Joe's able to pass that information along to his son. Jimmy Kibble will punt it away. And let's see if the Hokies can down it. They don't need to. A sideways bounce. And it's out at the 15 yard line. 27 7, Virginia Tech on top. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Dell Computer. Pioneering direct internet ideas for your business. Be direct. Dell. And by AXA Advisors. AXA Advisors. Building futures. Philadelphia, home of the Temple Owls. And right now they're in a 27 7 hole. Devin Scott, who started the game and came out, is back in. Scott with a quick throw that's caught by the tight end Joe Camus and he'll ramble across the 40 and Camus is out to the 43 yard line 28 yards on the throw from Devin Scott Philadelphia also home of the Philadelphia Eagles and our buddy Don McPherson played a few years here Donnie what's up hey Rich I talked to Frank Beamer at halftime and he said he was a little bit frustrated with his team making the big plays but not doing the little things right not taking advantage of every opportunity on this sideline, Coach Bob Wallace wants his team to hit the ball in the middle, stop trying to bounce it out to the outside. He knows that he can run the ball, but he wants his guys to hit it up in the middle. One note, Devin Scott came out of the ball game for a short period of time in the first half. He's got a sprained wrist. He's back in the game now, but let's keep an eye on that wrist. Hey, Donnie, while you're down there, and we see Bobby Wallace right now, the transformation that this program is undergoing right now, they're, they're building a huge football complex on campus, and 
the next piece of the puzzle might be a new stadium in Philadelphia. They're talking about replacing the vet, the Phillies getting a new stadium, and the Eagles getting a stadium, quite possibly that the Temple would share one. What, what do you know about the situation? You're a Philly guy. <laughs> well, there's a lot of money in the state legislature here in the, in the state of Pennsylvania for new stadium construction and reconstruction, but they have to share it with, with Pittsburgh. So it's going to rely on the, the owner, owners of the Phillies and the Eagles to come together on a joint venture or a joint stadium or each team going, to, to going out and finding the land and the resources to build a new stadium. Temple's future is in the balance here because Temple wants a facility that they can call home for their recruiting purposes and, and every other purposes. They're doing a lot of work up at North Philly on their campus, but they're looking for a stadium to call home, so they want to get in on a deal with at least the Eagles. Kind of similar to the way the, the Pitt Panthers are doing it with the Steelers. Worst home records in the 90s. This is not necessarily because this is not a great home field, but Temple's not been a real good program in the 90s. As you can see, but this man in his second year was a legend at North Alabama, and he accepted the challenge to come to Philadelphia. And many people feel he's made progress, not by leaps and, and bounds, which is hard to do at this at this place, but he's starting back on that road, little by little. Scott on the option. And Scott is across midfield to the 47 yard line. Nick Sorensen made the stop. That's kind of the option from last year, Gino. The option from last year. But Devin Scott, these first two plays of the second half, he came out, he audibled on the big completion to his tight end before, able to pick up a lot of yards, then comes out in the option. And just like Don McPherson said, don't. Try to bounce outside, cut back, and get that ball in the middle because Virginia Tech has the speed to run you down going outside. McKee on the inside handoff. And he's down to the 42 yard line. Ben Taylor and Nick Sorensen made the stop for Virginia Tech. Last year, when these two teams played, Nick Sorensen, who is the safety today, was the starting quarterback for Virginia Tech. Al Clark was hurt along with Dave Meyer and Sorensen had to play quarterback last year. Very versatile guy but he's found a home at the free safety spot. Here comes a blitz. They had the right play call but they couldn't execute it. Godfrey was in the flat. Scott could not get him the ball. Those are the types of opportunities that Al's can't afford to not make the plays. Godfrey was out there on a screen. The Virginia Tech defense caught in the blitz. No one accounted for the running back. And Scott just can't get him the ball. And Bobby Wallace knows it. He had a big play waiting to happen. Second down and 10. Corey Moore, so fast off the end. He may have been a little too fast. Good anticipation by our director, John Del Vecchio. Dead ball, false start, offense. Oh, it was John penalty. We played it down. He's as disruptive a player as you'll find in college football. Six feet, 225 pounds out of Brownsville, Tennessee. Pro scouts, some of them really like him. Some of them say maybe he's too small. I don't know. The guy runs a 4-3-4. He's got wide receiver speed, and he's got the toughness to play defensive end, even when opposing teams put tight ends on him to give the tackles extra help block him. They still can't block him. So I think any time a guy has that type type of athletic ability he'll be playing a lot of years at the next level. He only has one tackle today inside screen this time to Carlos Johnson as he races for the sideline and he's thrown out of bounds and a flag I think will come flying. The official reached for the flag and I think we'll get a personal foul on Virginia Tech and that was in front of the Virginia Tech bench.
Well, the Temple players were indicating a personal foul, but no flag. You see Sorensen steps out of bounds, gives that, that extra shove, and it almost looks like, watch the official here. Watch him reach. Almost look at watch him reach. reaching for his He was <laughs> reaching for his flag, you know? He never pulled it out. That one is incomplete as Scott was hit on a blitz by Ike Charlton. Sorensen just comes free right through the middle. They come with a safety blitz, and he just puts a wall up on Devin Scott so he can't deliver the ball accurately. Garvin Ringwelski. It's a punt it away. And it's into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20. So Virginia Tech will get the football. The Hokies on top, 27 to 7. Here's another look at that hit by Nick Sorensen on Carlos Johnson. We saw the official reaching for the flag on that last replay, and he actually went and got it. Let's take a look. We only saw him reaching, but look at this. He actually takes the flag out of his pocket and puts it on the ground. That's as good as throwing it. How don't you, if you take it out of your pocket, that's a 15 yard penalty. Maybe on further review, his partner felt it wasn't a late hit. Virginia Tech keeps it on the ground with Andre Kendrick. LeVar Talley made the stop. Five yard pickup. Temple defense has been called upon an awful lot today. Vic flushed out and he is loose again midfield Vic he may go he will touchdown Michael Vic 75 yards Rich, we've seen a lot of athletic quarterbacks this season and Antoine Randall at Indiana, Billy Cockrum at Minnesota, but I don't think we've seen a quarterback with the speed that Michael Vick has. Running the 40 and 4-3. Temple gets caught in a blitz. They have a little play action. He's able to break contain and, and his receivers still blocking downfield. That's an impressive, impressive run. He has had touchdown runs of 53 and 75 yards. Take a look. Michael Vick comes out of the play action, and Temple is there to defend it. He just cuts right back, gets up the field. From there, he's off to the races. His receivers give him a couple blocks downfield. There's no possible way you can do that unless you have that 4 3 speed that Michael Vick has. Here you see, he sees the blitz. He knows he makes a quick play action fake, sets up the owls are there, reverses directions, and no one can catch him. Here you see the receivers blocking downfield in front of him. Great job of all 11 players on offense not ever giving up on the play. He is something. Does the coach in this in the in the box tell a quarterback after he runs 75 yards like that? You Why had didn't a guy, you throw you, the you ball had a guy open. There. <laughs> but you had everybody covered. Why didn't you just throw it away instead of run for 75 and a touchdown? <laughs> <laughs> Sharps <laughs> goes to a knee out to the 20. <laughs> Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator for Virginia Tech. Let's see, you had Hall open, you had Davis open, but you know what? That's okay. 
I, I think Temple did a great job of defending the receivers. They had everybody covered downfield. They had they had Michael Vick caught not letting him break contain and he just turns around and runs the other way and no one can catch him. He's almost like a punt returner once he gets out of the pocket. He's a guy that if he gets a seam can escape. Devin Scott back at quarterback for Temple. Camus to the 30. Jamel Smith made the stop for Virginia Tech. Rich, he's like a punt returner, but I'd be willing to say that he's probably faster than every person on Temple's defense. I would think so. There's not many players in college football that run a 4 3 3 40. Or squat. What is he, squat? He, he's got a 40 inch vertical, bench is 320, and squats 500 pounds. Scott to the sidelines. And it's caught by Muckerson. And Muckerson is knocked out of bounds at the 41. You can read about all the vitals of Michael Vick in this week's issue of ESPN the magazine the whiz kid the red shirt freshman of Virginia Tech and he's going to be throwing for a lot of years here he's got three more years after this one at Virginia Tech 11th longest in Virginia Tech history Scott's throw is in and out of the hands of Sean Dillard who falls to the turf here at the vet which can be quite painful. This is the hardest surface of any National Football League facility that has AstroTurf. Well I think any turf is hard. I think that Philadelphia always gets rated as the worst field the pros want to play on but you got to realize in the NFL they're playing on you know fairways and greens on on Sundays and I think guys want to play always on grass because it's easier on their body or easier on their joints and things like that. Don McPherson you spent some time on this turf quite literally and, and this turf is definitely ankle killers. We've already seen one player from Temple Theo Ross is out with an ankle injury right guard and now we have another player down so this turf is definitely taking its toll on the Temple players. Is it just that they haven't replaced it or what, why is the turf so hard here uh, than some other outdoor AstroTurf fields? Well this is actually fairly new turf. It's only about three or four years old but the difference is with this field is that with the baseball field in here you have first base home plate excuse me home plate uh, uh, the pitchers mount second base and third are all on the one side of the field and the seams when they replace the turf are very wide and sometimes a lot of times those seams come up and players trip. We've seen a lot of players get hurt on those seams. And it's not a rather soft landing when they come down. It's a very hard surface as well. Yes you're right. That may be the biggest AstroTurf seam I've, I've ever seen. <laughs> Look at that. That's not on the play. That's not in the left field of I play, know. though. I, right? <laughs> I think what also is with the cold weather that you usually get in Philadelphia makes the surface even that much harder. The cold weather and the rain as well. And this, this place gets a lot of rain in, in, in definitely in the fall. This is uncharacteristic weather, but it does make it very slick. It's a very slick surface in the wet weather. Tim Leach being helped to the bench right now. He went down in that last play. He's the best offensive lineman for Temple, and he's a good one. Third down short and the Owls pick it up. Doesn't look like it. Tenardo Sharps on the carry. Fourth down and short and I think Bobby Wallace may just go for it here. Rich I will say this one thing that I do like about Virginia Tech coming out in the start of this second half is they've turned up the intensity of another level as they're coming after them. Temple on on defense. And blitzing, they know what's at stake here. And like you said, you said they got to score, win, win by a lot of points. You know, I think they're doing exactly what they want here today. Wallace thought about going for it, and now has decided to bring Garvin Ringwelski on. Ricky Hall 
<laughs> Big special teams block. Thank Jam you. Jamel Smith and a flag goes down. Thank you. <laughs> One guy staring there right there and looking at it. He wouldn't call it. See the flag come out of. 33 yards on the kick. Corey Moore. Illegal block in the back by the return team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Moore moving a little gingerly. We'll see the block in the corner. There, right there, the helmet is in the back of the defender. His helmet has to be in front of the defender where it's not, it should be considered a legal block. And that right there shows it was a good call by the official. Hey, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Take that shit off, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. Stiff. Out to the 24 yard line. Top two conferences in college basketball in the first ever ACC Big Ten Challenge November 30th and December 1st. ESPN and ESPN2 will bring you eight of the nine games. Log on to ESPN.com and play the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Pick them for a chance to win a trip to either the ACC or the Big Ten Tournament in 2000. On second down, stiff right side. Gino, there's a question in my mind. It's 34-7, Virginia Tech. Seven and a half minutes left. The game is almost out of hand. How long does Frank Beamer stay with his first unit here? Because certainly he tried to deflect much of the BCS talk and, and, and running up the score and, and winning by a big margin. What, what do you think is going through his mind right now? Well, I think if they do go down the field and score a touchdown here, that's probably the last we'll see Michael Vick in the starting offense, or at least some of the starters on offense. But they still need to work. They have another game after this one. They have to sharpen up their skills. Stiff straight ahead to the 34-yard line. They have Boston College next week. Right, and I'm sure we've seen the play calling. It just looks a little bit different on this drive. They're trying to run the ball, trying to sharpen up their blocking. The, the assignments by their offensive line, but I'm sure if they go down the field and score here, it's the last that we'll see of most of the starters on Virginia Tech. On second and six, Michael Vick on the out pattern to Andre Davis, and he's got the first down to the 41 yard line. Teddy Fryer. On the coverage for Temple. Of course, in the Bowl Championship Series, for those of you unaware, the the scoring elements: one fourth pole average, computer average, schedule strength, and number of losses. Now, obviously, Virginia Tech number of losses—they're very good. Pole average—they're pretty good as well. It's the schedule strength and the computer average as well. Those are the areas that Nebraska has made up some ground on. You know, and that's, that's the, I see a problem in the, in the BCS. If this team goes undefeated and is not in the Sugar Bowl playing for the national championship, they can't control what their opponents or previous opponents are doing. All they can do is Sit down. They don't. Their athletic director makes up the schedule. Players didn't make up the schedule. I'm sure they'd say, "Let's play the best team in the country every week," but they didn't do it. All they can do is beat the teams they play on Saturday. Stiff, and he's knocked out of bounds. And flags come down. And this time, I think they're for real. Dan Klecko in on the stop, and he's hobbling right now. Dead ball, late hit, out of bounds by the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. And it's a first down for Virginia Tech. Here's a look. Klecko has him, but they're stiff out of bounds. There's the late That's hit. A good call. Good call, but 
Temple was unfortunate that they didn't get some of those that called their way in the first half thus far in the game and now when they finally do call it, it's against them. Anytime you get hit along the sideline like that I'm all for a flag. Michael Vick and the Hokies. Trying to bounce outside is Andre Kendrick. Strength of schedule. This is what we're talking about here. They can't control what their opponents do or their opponents record. All they can do is win every game that they play. That's where I don't think if Virginia Tech goes undefeated they should be playing in the Sugar Bowl for a national championship because they've shown me today in the little bit that I've seen them thus far previous in the season that they are one of the best teams in the country. He'll throw it deep. Touchdown, Andre Davis. 31 yards. Rich, and the reason that I say Virginia Tech is one of the best teams in the country, Don McPherson said it at the start of the telecast. It's offense, defense, and special team. There's three phases of this game. Virginia Tech hasn't come out here and wowed us with their offense or their defense or their special teams, but they've been able to score on defense. They've been able to be consistent on their offense, and their defense has turned it up a notch and become dominant in the second half. Shane Graham with the extra point. So Michael Vick with two long touchdown runs. And two long touchdown passes. And number two, Virginia Tech looks it on top over Temple. 41-7, number two, Virginia Tech on top. Michael Vick is either on the field, running or throwing, or on the headsets. He's, he doesn't do much else out here. He hasn't done much wrong besides a couple of lackadaisical passes in the first half. He's been very impressive. Leonardo Sharps finally goes down. Derek Pinella in on the stop. Down below is Don McPherson, Donny. Hey, Rich, the problems for Temple increase. Uh, with uh, Theo Ross is now in the locker room, Tim Leach, the left tackle, has a right knee sprain. They're icing it down now. They're not sure if he's going to return. All right, thanks, Donny. Temple takes over. Devin Scott. Oh, my. Ben Taylor just planted Greg Muckerson on the hard veteran stadium turf. This is what happened. You throw those high balls. Those oh. receivers don't like going up for those. But Taylor just, oh, he makes Muckerson pay for it. Oh, Muckerson again. And again, it's Taylor. Down goes Frazier. Coach, I need a blow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. The poor kid, a sophomore out of Trenton. And he's still in one piece, and that's good. Just on a slant route. These balls have to be low for the receiver. It was. But, boy, Taylor is there. It just does a per that's Those are picture book form tackles right there for Ben Taylor. Scott's going to throw it up. And it is dropped. Rodney Whitaker almost had an interception. We head to the studio. Reese Davis. Reece.
from some nasty hits to what the kids like to call a sick run, and that means good. Lamont Jordan from Maryland against Virginia. Terps trying to get bowl eligible, and Lamont Jordan has logged on, and he is part of the Gone Network. 90 yards, 239 on the day. He set a school record for single season rushing yards. He's one of the better running backs we've seen this year. We had Maryland early in the season, you know. And he put on an impressive performance for us. Ricky Hall at midfield gets a good block, and Hall is down to the 41 yard line. The Hokies are hitting right now, and they're on top. Tournament week tips off. College basketball doubleheaders on both ESPN and ESPN2, two Eastern on ESPN. First round coverage of the Maui Invitational at Chaminade. Chaminade against Purdue. Then at 9 o'clock, fifth ranked North Carolina takes on USC. Then on the Deuce at 7, Big East Showdown, UMass and UConn. And then at 11.30, Georgetown and Memphis from Maui. Now Marco Jackson goes down. Well, Corey Moore does the hitting a lot, but he had nothing but high fives for Ben Taylor. Gee, he takes like the Energizer Bunny. They keep going and going and going. These guys are impressive in all phases of their game. Even their backups come in and they've been dominant. Right now, the first offense is still in the ball game at 41 7. Cullen Hawkins, who had that great kickoff return, dropped by Taylor Sumer. And it will be second down. Rather, third down now. And about six. There's a look at Ben Taylor, Jamel Smith, Michael Hawks. Moore is the headliner on that defense, but they are deep and they are good. That was, that was a great one, I'm telling you. The team hey, speed that, on that defense, that is why this tech defense is ranked number two in the country. Vick. Michael Vick got a man open, and it's caught. Derek Carter, the tight end. And he's popped by Kevin Harvey at the 20 yard line. Vic is making great decisions here. He steps up in the pocket. Looks like he's going to run, try to get the first down. Temple comes up. All the secondary comes up, says, All right, we're not going to let him run. Finds a tight end standing by himself in the middle of the field. Is that the last series for the first offense for Frank Beamer? I was just going to say, I was going to go out on a limb, but I think we've seen the last of the Michael Vick and, and most of the starting offense. Extra point is up and good. in almost seven yards of carry and here you see why just busts through the line of scrimmage and outraces everybody to the corner of the end zone no one's catching him he and Chiron Stith make a pretty good combination 246 yards per game the Hokies average on the ground they have 282 today At halftime, all the many of the legends from Philadelphia. Chuck Bednarik is in there, Steve Carlton, and down goes Frazier. There he is, smoking Joe Frazier.
Carlton looking quite jovial. He didn't stop for questions. <laughs> Dave Meyer. Breaking loose out to the 27 yard line. At halftime, you saw the legends, our legend, Don McPherson, caught up with Smoking Joe. Joe, good to see you come out here today and support the Temple program. What was it all about? I would say, number one, Donnie, that uh, I've been a part of it for so long, and I've heard of Temple. I've been to Mrs. Temple so long. It's just one big part of the family, you know what I mean? But therefore, we're not doing too good right now. <laughs> You've been a big, long-time supporter of Philadelphia. You're a native of Philadelphia. People know you around the country. is one of the greatest fighters ever. What does Philadelphia mean to you? Philadelphia means, uh, let's say, living, family, love, understanding, you know what I mean? Get the job done. Again, one of the greatest fighters of all time. What do you do to keep yourself busy these days? Well, right now we run a gymnasium in North Philadelphia for young boys. We have some great guys coming out of the gym now. And therefore, we're not going to go anywhere. We're going to stay there and continue making Philadelphia a good place for athletes and great boxing. Joe, thanks a lot. Great to see you. Nice to see you, man. See, even Joe came out to see Don McPherson play when he was an Eagle. <laughs> Temple with a football. Devin Scott. His throw is incomplete. Ben Taylor was looking for another big hit and almost got it. Larry Austin on the coverage. Rich, I was talking earlier about the speed. Ben Taylor is actually listed as a linebacker but playing safety right now. So that'll tell you just how fast. The whole the, the linebackers in the secondary, and then you've got a guy like Corey Moore that runs a 4-3. He's got wide receiver speed. Engelberger on the other end running in 4-5-5. Five, five. Very impressive. Taylor may be blitzing on this play, along with everybody else in a white jersey. And down goes Scott. Ben Taylor. Third sack of the day. On the Temple quarterback. And the, the players realize the situation they're in with the BCS standings. They know they're ranked number two in the country. They know they have to win big. They're coming out here and making a statement today and just coming after them. They're playing hard, good, hard football. Larry Austin was in on that stuff. Uh oh. Whoa! It's loose. Hokies have it. Andre Davis. This is a reputation turnover because Virginia Tech's reputation for blocking punts, I'm sure, made the true freshman, Garvin Ringwelski, a little bit nervous. Good snap, just hits him right in the chest, just can't get a handle on it. Like you said, reputation. I'm sure he's nervous about them coming in and blocking it. Probably took his eye off the ball late, thinking about the rush. Michael Vick is out of the game. Dave Meyer, the quarterback. Andre Kendrick in motion. And Stiff still in the game. Carries it to the five yard line. Meyer got some starts last year when Al Clark was hurt. He's a big kid, a junior. Out of nearby Ramsey, New Jersey. One more quarter left. Number two, Virginia Tech, comfortably on top, 48-7. Moments ago, Tim Leach, the senior out of Philadelphia. Into the locker room he goes. It's tough. A tough loss for Temple, their best offensive lineman. Now the pitch to Sharon Stiff. And Stiff is wiped out at the three-yard line. Good play by Taylor Suman. Let's head to the studios. Reese Davis, what's up, Reese? Chris Gino was talking about the BCS. Uh, you showed us that great run by Jared Payton. 44 yards. Miami had Virginia Tech last week. 
and a very tough physical game. Kendrick busts his way into the end zone. Touchdown. Fifty-four seven. I think this will take care of the computers and the margin of victory. I think mission accomplished on that end. I think for Frank Beamer's club now, he just got to get out of Philly without any injuries. I don't think Virginia Tech has any problem holding up their end of the bargain of the BCS. The problem is the, the opponent, their opponents that they've already beat. Their weakness is schedule. Two touchdowns for Andre Kendrick. And the Hokies on a roll in Philadelphia. Up big. Hard for him to do because Beamer's roommate in college was Johnny Oates, the manager of the Texas Rangers. And of course, the Rangers and the Mariners are bitter rivals in the AL West. But Beamer, along with Oates and Lou Pinella, all get along very, very well. In fact, Beamer comes to a lot of the whenever the Rangers and the Mariners play, every now and then you'll see Frank Beamer there. Oates was a great baseball player at Virginia Tech. And Beamer was a great safety there. 66 through 68, he played for Jerry Claiborne. What are you laughing at, Toretta? I was just gonna say, is that in your trivia book, your first edition? No. Come on. <laughs> I, do, I do some work for the Mariners, so I know Lou a little bit. You are the king of trivia. And I see Johnny Oates, and the last time I saw the Oates and Lou together, Beamer was there. You are the king of trivia, is all I know. <laughs> Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty. We played it down. Well, the Hokies. Michael Vick. His day is done. Second down and a bunch. DeVito going deep for Johnson makes the catch to the 45. Larry Austin on the coverage. What a nice throw by DeVito. Just a little pump fake. They faked this, the, that little receiver screen that they've been throwing all game and send one of the wide receivers on a deep route. Johnson and DeVito throws it right over his shoulder. That's a perfect throw. Called down by Nick Sorensen. We go to the studios, Reese Davis. Virginia and Maryland. This thing's been back and forth all day. Maryland on top 24-20. Dan Ellis to Casey Crawford. Casey, I've got a long distance dedication. 27-24. The Cavs are on top now in this game, and Notre Dame is taking a lead over Boston College. This is important to the Hokies because the Hokies use a little help from BC, like showing up for their game next Friday at 8-2, but the Irish are on top 7-0. <laughs> Even Reese Davis is getting punchy. It's late in the season. And late in this one. DeVito in trouble. Throwing. And it's incomplete. But Reese is right in a BCS kind of way. Strength of schedule and your opponent's schedule. And your opponent's opponent's schedule. But that's something that Virginia Tech can't control. All they can do, like I said, is control how they play on the, any every given Saturday in their own game. They can't worry about what their previous opponents or what their future opponents are doing. You know, it used to be in the old system, fans and announcers and coaches used to argue a lot about who was number one and who deserved to go Dead here ball. Ball start. Offense. and who deserved Five to go there. The BCS, 
you still have those arguments. There's just more stuff to talk about, like the strength of schedule of opponents and opponents' opponents. Virginia Tech's key games today James Madison, UAB, Clemson, Virginia, and Boston College. Virginia Tech's key game is right here against Temple. I could care less what those other four. I know it matters to the BCS, but they shouldn't, they're not concerned with that. DeVito. It's caught by Joe Camus. Gino, I concur with that. But what we were sent by the ESPN Research Department, and Brad Edwards is one of the best in the country at this, it was not necessarily a release, more than a legal brief detailing this weekend's games and the, the strength of the opponents for Virginia Tech. And it, on the surface, and I Florida agree with State. that sign right there. If they go undefeated and they're not in the Sugar Bowl, that'll be a tragedy for college football. Here's DeVito. He's in a world of hurt. Down he goes. He lost the football. It's still loose. And Temple gets it. The 41 yard line. I know when the BCS was created, they, they didn't want any split titles where one pole, one team was number one, and the other pole, the other team was number one. You know what, though? That might happen this year. I'll explain when we get back. 55-7. Virginia Tech on top of Temple. Rich Waltz, Gino Toretta back in Philadelphia. All right, Gino, here's the scenario. In the BCS standings, Nebraska is coming up strong in third place. If Nebraska wins out, their two games against Colorado, or rather Texas, and a champion at Texas and Colorado Texas would be in the championship game of the Big 12 and say Florida State wins today those two teams have a shot and a likely shot of Nebraska overtaking Virginia Tech and being in the Sugar Bowl right that would send Virginia Tech to the Orange Bowl now if Nebraska beats Florida State in the Sugar Bowl Nebraska would win then the BCS title but say Virginia Tech wins the Orange Bowl they're undefeated they could still be named national champions by the AP poll because the coaches poll is the one that awards the BCS champion I'm still saying it'll be a shame if Florida State goes undefeated and Virginia Tech goes undefeated they're not playing in the Super Bowl against each other and I agree with you I'm contractually obligated to point that out. <laughs> Virginia Tech with a football, and it's Lee Suggs around the right side. Now, as I was trying to say so poorly, the games for Nebraska that, that count today in, in their strength of schedule, they've got Iowa, California, Southern Miss, and Oklahoma State on their schedule. They, they play all four of those teams today? Yeah. <laughs> It would be in the Big Reds best interest if those teams did well today. Okay. Frank Beamer. 55-7 his team on top. You can do that when it's 61 degrees in Philly. Actually, they do it here when it's 15 degrees as well. But. Suggs, again, we go to the studios, Reese Davis. Guys, you really have a handle on that BCS thing. I am impressed. Purdue and Indiana, Vinny Sutherland back to receive the punt, and you know, and Vinny's got some serious jets. 66 yards, he takes it back. Second punt return for a touchdown this year, and Purdue on top of the bucket. 30 to 24 early in the fourth. Last time we saw Vinny Reese was what, a 99 yard catch from Drew Brees? That won the ball game for him against Northwestern. Meyer dumps it off to Suggs. And he's to the 47 yard line. Well, having to win by a big margin and all this BCS talk sometimes puts a coach in an uncomfortable position like Frank Beamer. I think college football has gone the wrong way when you, 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 you know, you're saying, well, you got to beat a team by so much. I mean, the, the, the deal is to, uh, is to win if you can. Edric Harley on the coverage. And so 
It'll be a 15 yard penalty for Frank Beamer. Gino, your thoughts on that? I agree with Coach. I think all you can be concerned with is, is winning if you can, win your own game. I mean, you, you have to show you're going to be dominant. You can show your dominant football team by winning by 21 points. They, they're going to win by a lot more than that today. And because of special teams score a couple defensive scores. So I think Coach Beamer is exactly right. How about Don McPherson? Donnie, what are your thoughts on that? I agree with Gino. I think you have to continue to play your game. And, and talking to Coach Beamer at, at halftime, he wants his team to do the little things right. And if the little things result in touchdowns, you can't fault the players for that. Run, 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 run. From a player's point of view, and you two guys are, are removed from the college game at a time where I can still get a player's perspective from both of you. Just the whole BCS situation. Gino, you first. Well, I, I just don't like how other teams' schedules factor into how high Virginia Tech is ranked. They, they should be ranked by how good they are as a team. That, that's my opinion. And I, I think that, you know, when you have so many teams playing college football, these kids need to be rewar rewarded for playing well. And I don't agree with computers and uh, checking out other people's strength of schedule. You never know when a team's going to have a good year or a bad year. And uh, you have injuries that, that alter already way too long. We have to remember that these young men are student athletes. And once you start talking about series and, and playoffs, you're really taking them out of the classroom. There's a great catch by a student athlete. Bob Slokowski down at the three yard line. 25 yards from Dave Meyer to Slokowski. A nice sliding catch by the sophomore out of Pittsburgh. Rich, and I agree with Don that you'd have to have, you, they'd have to start playing in two weeks in the playoffs if they did show it. Here you see Meyer just on a bootleg, throws a strike down the field. What a nice diving catch. First and goal from the two. And Suggs is hit right on the line. I don't think he got in. He didn't. Raheem Brock. Oh, he did. <laughs> Raheem Brock thought he made a big stop, but it, somehow Suggs spun his way into the end zone. So it's a touchdown for Virginia Tech. Rich, but going back to a playoff system, these teams would have to essentially begin play the week after the season that, that would be the first week of December they would start playoff games then what does that do the player does isn't going to get a college break he's going to essentially start practice the first week of August and he's going to go through he's going to miss Thanksgiving with his family he's going to miss Christmas and just like Don said they're students they're going to be going into the second semester you know still playing football games We'll continue our roundtable discussion. The BCS, right now, it's pretty good for Virginia Tech. 62 7. 62 7, Virginia Tech on top of Temple. Today at 3 30, coming up quickly on ABC Sports. Number 13, Penn State. Number 14, Michigan State. UCLA and USC. The Bruins looking for their ninth straight win. Check your local listings for the games in your area. Make sure you can see them by ordering ESPN Game Plan on pay-per-view. ABC Sports, the home of the Bowl Championship Series. <laughs> Section 381, all clear. <laughs> And Virginia Tech is a timeout on the field right now. I think Don Don McPherson called it. Donnie has two left. Let's go to the studios. Reese Davis, what are you up to? Speaking of punchy, Rich, Minnesota and Iowa. Boy, Iowa just absolutely fighting its guts out. One win on the season. Billy Cockrum throwing a screen here to Arlen Bruce, and the Golden Gopher is loose. Iowa had a 21-15 lead. Bruce will take care of that from 73 yards out, and the Gophers are on top, 22-21 in the fourth. Thanks, Reese. Michael Vick and the rest of the Hokies have impressed today. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. 
Gino, your argument against the playoff, and, and Don made it as well, would be at one double A in Division Two and Division Three, in fact, at the NAIA level for that matter, they do have a national playoff. Things go quite well. In fact, Division Two academics don't seem to be affected much by that playoff. Well, I think McPherson, though, at the last, his last comment was the money in the bowl games involved in the NC2A and Division One. That is the determining factor. You have bowl games that are paying schools between six and ten million dollars per bowl game. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you do all of a sudden? Do you just disband all the bowl games? You know, and then the school. They go to a playoff. Let's say they don't get to the championship game game for that huge payout, but they would have gone to a bowl game. I think that's the big factor is the money involved. Having just witnessed the renegotiation of the NCAA basketball tournament, don't you think though that a football tournament or playoff, whether it's small or big, would bring in a, a tremendous amount of revenue and offset the losses of, of the bowl games and you could still involve the bowl sites but it's rich basketball is different than football you basketball you can get prepared in a couple days for a game and football it takes you weeks to get prepared you have offense defense and special teams so you can't have just one tournament site like everybody come to Philadelphia and we're going to play 12 games in the vet. I'm not suggesting that I'm suggesting you keep the bowl sites so you have the the four uh, quarterfinal games at, at, at the Sugar the Orange the Fiesta and the Rose and you pick a site for the national championship. But that's not how Division one double A does it. They go to the higher rank highest ranked team. That's the home game. So if, if Division one's going to do it like Division one double A then do it like that where the highest the home field is the higher ranked team. That's my argument, but as Don McPherson said, the money is too big in these bowl games to just all of a sudden throw them out the window. Donnie, you're Richard, with us. Another thing about that, Richard, when does it stop? You start saying you can use the bowl games, make a playoff system. Why don't you just throw out the whole college football uh, history and just make it whatever teams qualify. Take the top 25 teams from the last 10 years, make a new league, forget about these guys as students, just go for a national championship, go for a, a minor league championship in football because that's where you're going with this. An emphatic no from Don McPherson. And Hall down to the 36 yard line. All right, counselors, you've made good arguments. The jury will be back in a moment. Number two, Virginia Tech, 62. Temple, seven. All of you computers out there watching this game, you must be impressed with Virginia Tech right now. Hokey football. And he's down to the 34. You've heard Don McPherson. You've heard Gino Toretta. What does Frank Beamer think about the BCS? Our approach has been this. You know, our schedule's made. There's nothing we can do about our schedule. We can't do anything about anybody else's schedule. We can't change those computers. I think they're programmed. I mean, they, you know, you can't do anything about them. The only thing you can do is go out and play well and prepare well. And any of these things that everybody wants to talk about. So uh, you, we don't, I personally, we don't talk about polls in our, in our team meetings. We don't talk about BCS. We don't, you know, we talk about the next team and let's get ready to go make a good preparation and play the best we can. And I think that's how you got to handle it. Suggs down to the 22 yard line. Akeem Staples made the stop. I think he's handled it very well. I think he's handled it well. One thing to add though, I'm sure this late in the season when you are ranked one of the top two teams in the country, I'm sure he's he's not mentioning ranking but I'm sure he's saying team you have an opportunity to be in the national championship game. Those six consecutive bowl appearances. You now one of the things that's impressive about Beamer. He was two eight and one in 1992 before they got on that roll of six bowl appearances. And yesterday we talked to him and he's. He had mentioned it was his administration that backed him up back in 92. It, it was his sixth year. They went 2 8 and 1. Most coaches would have been gone. But at Virginia Tech, they held on and they believed in him. He ripped off 9 and 3, 8 and 4, 10 and 2, 10 and 2, 7 and 5, 9 and 3. And he'll go to 10 and 0 with this win. Grant Noah, uh, Noel is the quarterback. 
And he'll pitch it. Keith Burnell down to the 10 yard line. Let's go to the studios, Reese Davis. And you can weigh in anytime you want, Reese, as well on this PCS. <laughs> All right, Rich, they're going to push me for time, though. Ohio State and Michigan tied at 17. Tom Brady finding Marquise Walker. And how many times have we seen Tom Brady bring his team back? It's 24-17 late. Belisari's only completed two passes in the second half. He'll have to do better than that. Harvard on top of Yale and the Ivy Brown wins. If those scores stand up, meaning Harvard-Yale, Brown is outright champion by virtue of the fact that they won today and they beat Yale. Yeah, but the computers really liked Yale's strength of schedule. <laughs> Frank Beamer. 62-7 lead for Virginia Tech. On this Temple staff, Blair Thomas, great running back at Penn State. Bobby Wallace has, has assembled a, a staff that has a lot of championship rings. He has a national championship ring with, with Penn State. Tim Stowers, his offensive line coach, won a national championship at the 1AA level with Georgia Southern. Rocky Hager, his linebacker coach, won two national titles at North Dakota State. Noel, the quarterback for Virginia Tech. And Suggs inside the 10. And he's down to the 8-yard line. Akeem Staples made the stop. A look at that coaching box. Suggs and Suggs is inside the five down to the four yard line. So Frank Beamer giving everybody an opportunity to play with four and a half minutes left. Boston College remains on this Virginia Tech schedule. Third down. And four. The Hokies can get a first down. And Suggs is very close to that. The strength of Virginia Tech in the BCS formula, the polls. They'll stay at number two. Unless, and I haven't been able to pick your brains on this one, Florida, Florida State, Mr. Toretta. Now we're worried about another game. <laughs> no, I want to know. Who do you think's going to win? Who do I think's going to win? I think the home team has been pretty dominant. All right. So are you are you picking one or the other? Or are you just riding the fence? I don't pick games. I just ride fences. <laughs> <laughs> and on fourth down, Temple. No. Did they hold them? Where will they mark it? Virginia Tech thought they got in, but Temple has held. So it will stay at 62 to 7 with three minutes and 10 seconds left in this football game. We'll be back to Philadelphia after this. 62 7, Virginia Tech on top of Temple with 3.10 left. And Frank Beamer, thank goodness it's not a normal day in Philadelphia. Because that's his early. Uh, with three minutes left, that's a pretty early ice bath, you know. It's the earliest we've seen this year. And even Ricky Bustle got one. That's all Gatorade on everybody. McPherson better watch out down there on the sidelines. They may throw some water on him. <laughs> Second down and seven. 
this win clinches a conference title for Frank Beamer. So I'm assuming that's what the, the shower was about to the seven yard line. You know, Temple University has some football history as well. You go back among the ages. There he is. Bill Cosby, who's been a big part of the just the rejuvenation of the Temple campus. A lot of building going on there, putting in. It's a 30,000 student school, and it's going from a commuter school to an on-campus living arrangement. And that's, Bobby Wallace has said that's been a change that will benefit his football program, he feels. DeVito, incomplete. And that will help recruiting tremendously when you know you're going to a parent a child's house and his parents are looking, well, where's my kid gonna be living? Well, he's gonna be living in downtown Philadelphia when he comes to Philadelphia or goes to the temple. But now once these dorms are built, they're gonna have a place to show them where the, the kids are gonna be staying. A huge new basketball arena, the Apollo, right on the, the Temple campus, a home for John Cheney and the Owls. A new football facility, a new practice facility. <laughs> Hokies, Hokies still haven't gotten one. There's a flag down in the end zone, and I think they ran into the kicker. Ronyel Whitaker. <laughs> he went a long ways to lose about 10 yards. <laughs> but it's all for naught. Roughing the kicker will bring it back. Another look back into the history of Temple football, a name that every nine and ten year old knows I played Pop Warner right there with you played Pop Warner until high school it was the temple head coach back and also 30 slash equipment manager yes <laughs> uh, had to do a lot of things back then Frank Beamer and his Hokies will go to 10 and 0 for the first time in school history 6 and 0 in the Big East Conference and they certainly have not hurt themselves either in the minds of the coaches or the riders or any of the pollsters or the computers for that matter. Who's getting it now? DeVito's throw is caught by Camus. And Camus is out to the 16 yard line. I think any coach is subject to dunking at this point in time. Tonight on ESPN and ESPN 2. On the deuce at 6 Eastern, number 23 Georgia, number 16 Ole Miss. The Iron Bowl at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Alabama and Auburn. Then at 9 Eastern on ESPN 2, number 24 Arkansas, number 15 Mississippi, uh, Mississippi State. ESPN, your home for Bowl Week. College football today. Reese Davis, John Makovic. We'll go over all the, the scores and the highlights from Rivalry Day. Preview the games to come. And mull over the BCS. No. <laughs> <laughs> On third down. DeVito. The sidelines, and he's got Terrence Stubbs. And Stubbs is down to the 32 yard line. And that, my friends, will do it. Bud Foster, Frank Beamer, job well done. Foster, the defensive coordinator. Two very happy guys for Don McPherson and Gino Toretta. I'm Rich Waltz. It's over. Virginia Tech wins impressively. Reese Davis coming up.